Today, we're diving into another pivotal moment in history and one that many say laid the groundwork for the establishment of the modern state of Israel. Let me just say right now, I know of Israel and of Palestine and I have a basic understanding of the conflict between the two, but I have never heard of this declaration and I certainly don't understand how the British were involved. So let's unravel the Balfour Declaration, a significant document resulting from a letter that totally rocked British policy and paved the way for the creation of the State of Israel. November 2, 1917, Foreign Secretary Arthur Balfour drops the metaphorical bomb, sending a letter to Lionel Walter Rothschild a leader of the Anglo-Jewish community expressing the British government's support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine. This is Razor 6, over, over. Okay, so let's take things back a little first. In the midst of World War I, with the Allies facing challenges on multiple fronts, Britain found itself in a precarious position. The war effort was strained and concerns about the Eastern Front and the stability of key allies were growing. It was against this backdrop that Prime Minister David Lloyd George's government decided to publicly support Zionism, a movement aiming to establish a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Talk about shaking things up. And why would he do this, you might ask? Well, besides genuinely thinking Zionism was cool, Lloyd George wanted to snag some support from the global Jewish community, especially in the US and the freshly revolutionized Russia. But that's not all. There was a strategic plan in play, and that was to connect the dots between India and Egypt and gain greater control of the shipping lanes, especially the Suez Canal. Lloyd George was like, let's create a land bridge between these nations and make history. Maybe he should have questioned things a little deeper. However, not everyone was on board. Edwin Montague and many powerful figures questioned the wording and true meaning of the declaration and raised questions around the formation of a Zionist state. This was specifically because of promises that had been made to the Arab allies who had helped the British to defeat the Ottomans who had been occupying the land. But guess what? These got overruled, outvoted, however you want to put it. And from there, the plot only thickens. Did we mention that at this stage Britain had also promised the land to the French and the Russians? We'll save that one for another video. World War I dramatically altered the geopolitical landscape in the Middle East, and it was at the height of the war that the Balfour Declaration began doing the rounds to raise support for the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. When World War I ended in 1918 with an Allied victory, the 400-year Ottoman rule ended, and Great Britain took control over what became known as modern-day Israel, Palestine, and Jordan. After pushing out the Ottomans, Palestine came under martial law. The British, French, and Arab-occupied Enemy Territory Administration governed the area shortly before the armistice with the Ottomans until the promulgation of a mandate in 1920. From here on in, Britain takes the reins in Palestine and things get seriously wild, infighting, guerrilla wars, underground movements, and a serious clash between Jews and Arabs. Talk about a history roller coaster. The Balfour Declaration and the British Mandate over Palestine were approved by the League of Nations in 1922. Arabs vehemently opposed the Balfour Declaration, concerned that a Jewish homeland would mean the subjugation of Arab Palestinians. It was believed that the establishment of Israel represented an unforgivable betrayal of the promises made by Britain and its allies, promises that Arab participation against the Ottoman Empire would result in nationhood and self-government. The prospect of an independent Jewish state also raised apprehensions about the loss of land, resources, and political influence for the Arab communities in the region. These fears were further exacerbated by the subsequent influx of Jewish immigrants, altering demographic balances and further fueling tensions. Many European countries even prevented some of their Jewish citizens returning back to their homelands once they had traveled to Israel, even offering incentives for them to stay. The Balfour Declaration intensified these concerns further, as Arabs feared that the realization of this declaration would lead to their eventual persecution and displacement. Fears that have been proven true, with legacy of these anxieties still continuing to shape the complex dynamics of the Israeli-Arab conflict to this day. Fast forward to the aftermath of World War II, the horrors of the Holocaust and the UN stepping in to decide Palestine's fate. The immediate aftermath of the war had seen Britain entrusted with the temporary administration of Palestine under the mandate system. However, the many years of false promises of nationhood and self-government for the Arab population led to widespread dissatisfaction. Also, in an effort to win independence, Zionists now waged a guerrilla war against the British. 
The main underground Jewish militia, the Haganah, formed an alliance called the Jewish Resistance Movement with the Etzel and Stern Gang to fight the British. In June 1946, following instances of Jewish sabotage, such as in the Night of the Bridges, the British launched Operation Agatha, arresting 2,700 Jews, including the leadership of the Jewish agency whose headquarters were raided. Those arrested were held without trial. Let's now return to the aftermath of World War II and the horrors of the Holocaust and the international support for Zionism reached a tipping point. The region's instability, fueled by growing Jewish-Arab tensions, made it challenging for Britain to decide on Palestine's future and they decided to cut and run, leaving the future of Palestine in the hands of the United Nations. The United Nations approved a plan to partition Palestine into a Jewish and Arab state in 1947, but the Arabs rejected it. This only delayed things. And in May 1948, Israel was officially declared an independent state with David Ben-Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, as the prime minister. Israel was officially born, a culmination of decades of Zionist aspirations and the legacy of the Balfour Declaration. While this historic event seemed to be a victory for Jews, it also marked the beginning of more violence with the Arabs. But real talk now, as we know, not everyone was thrilled. Arabs were bitter about promises not being kept, tensions rose, and the region got rocky. Many Arabs in Palestine and elsewhere were outraged by their failure to receive the nationhood and self-government they had been led to expect in return for their participation in the war against Turkey and the Ottoman Empire. In the years after the wars, the Jewish population in Palestine increased dramatically along with the instances of Jewish-Arab violence. Tensions between Jewish and Arab Muslim communities have persisted throughout recent years and the intricate hostility between these groups traces back to ancient times when both inhabited the region, considering it sacred. Jerusalem holds profound significance for both Jews and Muslims. The city encompasses the Temple Mount, housing revered sites like the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the Western Wall, the Dome of the Rock, and more. In recent years, much of the conflict has revolved around territorial occupation in key areas. Gaza Strip, a parcel of land situated between Egypt and contemporary Israel. Golan Heights, a rugged plateau positioned between Syria and present-day Israel. West Bank, a territory that serves as a dividing line between modern Israel and Jordan. The Balfour Declaration, whilst a product of its time, left an indelible mark on history shaping the Middle East and international relations in ways that are still felt today. It shows how clever wording within a statement and individual aspirations of power can really help benefit the few at the expense of the lives of many. The Balfour Declaration is like a time capsule and is still shaping the Middle East and international relations today. It's crazy how a few words can change everything. And there you have it, the epic saga of the Balfour Declaration and how it rocked the history boat. If you dug this trip back in time, smash that like button, share it with your pals, and stay tuned for more mind-blowing history adventures. Until next time, this is Uncivilized, signing off. Keep being curious, keep being awesome, and stay informed.